orbit the sun. Eight degrees above and below the ecliptic lies a region called the zodiac. Every constellation that falls within this band is referred to as a zodiac constellation. At any given time, the sun is in a constellation of the zodiac. The sun lies between us on the Earth and a certain constellation. Because we orbit our sun, the sun appears to move through zodiac constellations that are fixed in the sky. During nighttime, the opposite portion of our sky is lit by the sun. Astrologers linked each of the 12 zodiac constellations to the month that the sun passes through. So in June, the sun sweeps through Cancer, and in July, it glides across Leo. But you see, there's a problem with that. Each constellation is of different sizes. Some are small, some are big. It takes the sun seven days to pass through Scorpius, the smallest zodiac constellation, and 44 days to clear Virgo, the largest. So you cannot divide the year into 12 equal pieces with 12 equally shaped constellations. A lot of people put a great deal of significance on their zodiac sign, their sun sign. But in reality, since the Earth is processing, the constellation in which the sun appears today is different from the constellation in which it appeared 2,000 years ago. So the next time someone tells you that you're competitive because you're a Scorpio, tell them, well, you know, today I'm really not a Scorpio anymore. From the infamous what's your sign line to predicting fortunes and defining personality traits, the 12 signs of the zodiac have played a substantial role in pop culture. But where do these signs come from? And who named the stars? We have original names for stars, in some cases that came to us from Mesopotamia. Some names were added to the stars by the Greeks and the Romans. Some of those survived, some of them did not. With the collapse of the Roman Empire in about 450 AD, much of this knowledge was lost. However, it was preserved by the Arabs. In fact, much of astronomy survives today because of the Arabic astronomers preserving and augmenting the calculations and work of the Greek and Roman astronomers. In 150 AD, Greek scientist Claudius Ptolemy merged his own observations with historical writings, labeling more than 1,000 stars. And out of all the constellations that cover our skies, we've learned that 12 are zodiac constellations. But in reality, there are 13. Even if we're not followers of astrology, most of us know what our astrological sign is. What most of us don't know is that instead of having 12 zodiac constellations, there are actually 13. Ophiuchus, which is Greek for the serpent bearer, is our forgotten sign. It has 55 visible stars and is home to Bernard's star, which is the fastest moving star through our night sky. Nestled between Scorpius and Sagittarius, Ophiuchus dwarfs the constellations it surrounds. Although it was one of the original 48 star patterns that Ptolemy cataloged, some scientists speculate that it might have been dropped as a zodiac sign to keep an even number of 12. Others think that precession could have nudged Ophiuchus off the zodiac. But the real answer remains a mystery. The only star in the universe that doesn't belong to a specific constellation is our sun. Comparatively speaking, the sun is a typical aging star with an average mass.